So, Monica, hello, Jonas, hello, Colleen, yes, I said already hello, USA, Mexico, Latvia, Austria, <laughs> welcome to you all. It's very nice to be here and talk about dog walking, how to do it how to do it with loose leash. There is always questions. And I put some of them here on your screen that you can see those. They are always similar. Uh, how to walk with loose leash, how to do that dog is not pulling, reduce interest to, on other dogs. So it's always similar questions. And in this webinar, you get answers to those questions and of course distance your dog needs more distance than you think and five meters is usually total minimum absolute minimum and if your dog is too nervous too irritated he, he can't learn and you will not succeed. You have to let your dog sniff. I hope you know this. And here is timer. How long it can take with sniffing. And if you don't let your dog sniff, your dog will be irritated. He doesn't want to walk with you there will be a lot of problems. This is real time timer there. You can see how long it can take. As you see, 40 seconds, still sniffing. There is no plan to move. You need patience. Uh, if you walk your dog, there is always some places where he wants to sniff more. This is one minute or maybe more, but uh, sometimes only a few seconds. So as you see, we are past one minute and still sniffing. So, one minute, 22 seconds was, was this one sniff. So, what it means? It means that you need time, patience, and you have to give those things to your dog too. Let's watch this video again because this is what you do all the time if you're walking with your dog. If your dog knows how to walk, you don't need this contact sound. You don't have to do, or maybe one time, let's say one walk, <laughs> one contact sound, because most of the time your dog walks nicely on leash. No pulling, nothing. So there is correct moment and a little bit late moment, but both have uh, this contact sound has to be before dogs pulls the leash or you pull the leash. It doesn't matter, but contact sound has to be first always. If you are late, then be quiet and try to move on. There is my dog is quite young, but he knows how to walk, but there is another dog. And you can see how far away this dog is. It's 20 meters easily. But my dog reacts. He is irritated right now. And he doesn't react to the contact sound anymore. 
So moving away and making contact sound. Now my dog comes. So this is what you do. Moving away. This is very important. Let's see this again. My dog reacts. This is reacting. If you start, then your dog reaction probably looks like like barking and pulling a leash, but it's the same reaction. Just uh, my dogs react a little bit differently. No commands, nothing. This is very important. Don't command your dog if you want that your dog uh, behaves uh, like this. So he knows what to do without commands. If you try to command, then he will react to the command. So he will come to you, but it's because you commanded and you have to calm down. Because if you can't do it, I mean calm down, then your dog don't calm down because he can feel it. You have to relax, calm down, and then everything comes together. You need time and motivation. Yeah, there is not exactly, I can't say how long it takes, it's different, but usually after a few months, your dog will walk nice on leash, loose leash, and he knows how to react, you know what to do, and it's very, very nice walk, always. And you need motivation, you need it and your dog needs it. So, find your motivation and your dogs too, and then you will succeed. This webinar is uh, here because if some of you don't know what those signals are, uh, you need those to understand your dog better and to get better communication. Uh, you can understand what your dog says to you for that reason, we need to understand what are those calming signals. So we have to do this <laughs> anyway, because if you want to dive deep for this uh, uh, working, then you need also calming signals. If dogs are free or using uh, harnesses and loose leash, then there is better possibility to read those signs correctly. Uh, because if you use collar and tight leash, uh, then it's sometimes if it's difficult for dog to show those signals. Like if we take a dog and with tight leash, we keep him tight here on our heel or somewhere and don't let him move at all, then he can't show any signals for us or, or to another dog. So it's important that dog can move freely. No, let's say in harness and loose leash, it's the most best option if you are walking. And also commanding prevents or no, not blocks, but prevents dog from showing signals. It's because if we command dog, then this means that dog has to behave as we want. We are not allowing to show him some kind of signals. We want that he will stay or sit or heal. So not moving at all or just moving as we want. So no free movements, movements and because of that uh, dog, dog doesn't show any signals for us. So this is not very good option if we are commanding our dog. He can do it, but if we do it, then maybe he can show us what he wants to tell. Very good signal is curving. And if you walk your dog, uh, you can use it. You can use it a lot. And if possible, do it always. Uh, shaking what you see, this is just because dog is wet. This is not a calming signal. 
like I said, there is always maybe uh, sometimes not always, but sometimes uh, two or more options what this uh, means. And shaking also uh, means if dog is wet, then it's nothing. Uh, let's say when we wo are walking and my dog doesn't want to go where I am going. He comes, but uh, I don't like it, and he shakes. And important thing is that you not notice those signals. This is a <laughs> basic thing that you notice. And early, early, when they are in the green area, like uh, you now this situation we talk when under the dog attacked. So now you have to watch what is this dis distance uh, where your dog is in this green area, safe area. Uh, she will start to show those calming signals that she doesn't like it, this, this situation and you have to go going left, right, back, turn somewhere. So you now have to find this safe green area. This is different. Here dog just sniffs. Relaxed, no problem. But uh, and now will be second video. This is different. Homework. Of course there is homework. You have to watch, observe your dog. And learn to observe. This is very important. To, to understand and see those signals, you have to learn to observe. Dog walking level 2, problem solving. And today's webinar, we will watch eight videos and uh, I will show you what is common mistakes uh, when you walk your dog, what you can avoid. In this webinar, we will talk about human activities while walking, the reasons why loose leash walking may fail, so we look a little bit inside the dog brain, thinking and behavior. Then how to create new connections in the dog's brain and changing dog behavior. Dog is coming, but I did one mistake. This is too fast transition to difficult environment. Dog is not ready and you are looking okay. Your dog is walking nicely. Everything looks good. And you put this pressure on the dog that he have to have to be in, I don't know, very stressful situation. You have to look look at what your dog is doing, how he is behaving. And he doesn't want to come in this direction where those ladies are. You see, I'm pulling. No, I'm not moving. I'm turning my head. You see, I, I put it back. You see, it's calming signal. Looking away, now is yawning and we can go another direction he is happy now and i have to read my dog and you too and what i do with my dog so i put here three things i really liked those things and my dog also liked those things like obedience training, agility, rally obedience. My dog was 
always stressed and overstressed because this is usually what we do we do trainings we do we do obedience we do different uh, running activities uh, like agility or something like that but all those activities uh, doesn't help if your dog is stressed so uh, i removed step by step those activities in my list and i don't do those at all and teach and help dog uh, this new behavior change his brain cells his neurons inside his brains uh, remove this old bad behavior this direct behavior and teach this new behavior this is it i hope you have all the knowledge what you need if something is missing uh, contact me write me email ask uh, i hope you can walk your dog or other dogs nicely now and i hope you know a little bit also this background uh, why are we doing this now so this is in my opinion this is important to know it's just not uh, walking this is much much more in reality thank you thank you i'm i'm very happy i hope you can use what you learned from my webinars thank you goodbye happy walking